Hello, everyone. And hey, everyone. I like saying them all. Hello, hello. It's Dr. Rich Scheibner checking in with a briefer video about writing as and revising. We have to do so much revision when we're working on projects, whether it's for school or it's for a professional assignment. So much is about revision. And I'm a huge nerd for it. I love tracking how revision works. I think that it's important for growth. I've had some really hard times with revision. I've had some wonderful times. I've learned so much from this process. Before we get started, unfortunately, I want to say I've had to cancel this week's live stream due to being out for a personal matter. So today's topic is a pre-recording. Still, I really hope you enjoy it and find value in my discussion and video clips on revising an article. I'm going to share my experience. I hope it's really useful. And before we begin our main topic, I want to discuss a few items, even if I'm doing a pre-recording. Uh, I'd like to once again thank Writing Center Director John Suffern and the Writing Department for supporting another term of Get Writ Live. We are rock and rolling this term. We've only got a few left, and as it approaches to the end, comes up to the end, uh, you know, I'm getting a little sad. It's been really fun talking with special guests and addressing timely topics that I think many writers can think about. If you'd like to see any of our past live streams, you can find them in two places. We have our YouTube page. Um, if you click on some of the links here, you can see them. Uh, all of them are recorded and then embedded. So every stream that we do, even if you're watching this later, they're all on demand. So they'll be there uh, as long as they're on YouTube or if we decide to do anything with it, we'll let you know. But um, feel free to check those out. They're about an hour and a half most of the time. Uh, barring this one, it's a little shorter just because of uh, you know uh, reasons for that were a bit beyond my control, but we'll get there. Okay, so you have that on YouTube. You also have the Writing Center's homepage where you can see all the links I was just pointing to here. Uh, so last week, uh, we talked with Tyler Tokarek uh, from University of Toronto, Mississauga, to speak about writing as and traveling. And I shared my experiences being in Norway. Uh, we talked the previous week with about writing as and collaborating with Dr. Stevie Bell. What a fantastic conversation about collaborating uh, in passive and really active ways. And so we look back, you've got all the links there, and then we also have stuff on virtual reality coming next week. And then talking about uh, literature reviews, intervening in a conversation, which is what lit reviews are all about. Um, and then writing as and presenting, and finally composing yourself. For all of those, we have guests lined up. And so I'm excited to speak with them about these different topics. We get a lot of energy, as I always say, from these conversations. It's very collaborative. Um, in one way. Okay, and then lastly, I just want to mention, if you are thinking about uh, appointments uh, with the Writing Center, remember you can always sign up for 1v1, or not 1v1, but one-on-one -on -one sessions with our faculty in order to get feedback on writing assignments, whether you're just brainstorming or putting the final touches on an essay. So we've got all the links there on our webpage. Feel free to check those out. And one-on-one -on -one appointments. We also have an accessibility specialist as well as drop-in sessions and workshops. So if you're interested in coming next week, I'll remind everybody on the stream too. We are doing March 15th. I'll be there talking about research methods. And actually tomorrow, um, as in March 9th, because this will be streamed tomorrow, we have uh, constructing an argument. So what's your central argument? You're thinking about your argument and then how to support that with research methods or vice versa. Sometimes they precede each other. Um, check it out. I think you will uh, glean a lot from these and they're all free, which is awesome too. So it goes out. Okay, let's dive into our main topic for the day, writing as and revising. I love doing this kind of duality, you know, as and because sometimes revising is part of the writing, you know, we're actually scratching things out, deleting things, but sometimes revision is just stepping back and having a conversation, looking at um, sort of what possibilities might be there, not just through the written word. That's what I'm going to focus on mainly today, though, however, is the written word, because I think we can, a lot of us can relate to that when we're deleting things and thinking and how do we position revision, things of that sort. So in this video, what I'm going to discuss are my revision processes behind a print article called Theorizing Rhetorical Effective Workflows. Let me go ahead and point to that real quick here on the screen so we can see what it looks like. Um, and yeah, this was published in the journal College English. It's a well-known journal in the field of English and writing studies. 
It was published in 2020, and I haven't really had a chance yet to reflect on this publicly about what went into it. I had a plan to do that. Uh, that was really before the pandemic and everything took off, so it's been a little difficult. But nevertheless, I decided to do it here with you all because I believe in being really transparent about my process and and just hopefully that's a you know a public service and it's useful for fellow writers. For a number of months, I captured footage uh, of my processes with writing. And in the clips you're going to see right after this um, that I'll stream, it's about 30 minutes or so. You've got a lot of different things you can look at. Um, I narrate some decisions that I made, and I also do some time-lapsed footage. You'll see that I, I discuss what I call low order and high order revisions, uh, such as line editing and reference checking. And then that would be low order, but high order refers to conceptual revisions, organization, etc. Let me just show you what that letter looked like. And then you'll see how I'm talking about that at the end of the stream. Let's go there. Okay. So this is what I wrote um, in response to the reviewers. You know, I, I got feedback. I submitted the article. I went through numerous drafts. You know, it was it received what's called a revise and resubmit, which is when a journal essentially uh, likes what you had to say, would like to think about what would like reviewers to see it again provided you address the revisions, and then they make a final decision of whether to publish it. So, revise and resubmit, very common. Um, rarely have I had the experience of getting something fully accepted without any revisions needed. I got something recently that was accept with minor revisions. Um, that's still something we had to work through, right? But it was mostly um, clarifications and things like that. So, you know, substantial revision is very common for academic writing, especially when you start thinking about publications and such, no matter what journal you're with. Uh, I would be shocked if there, if there you didn't see something like that. And it's good. You're getting lots of feedback. You're trying to pull together what uh, the reviewers are asking for. Well, that's what I did for this letter. And I talked about it at the end of this video in the sense that, uh, you know, what kind of choices I made. But as I mentioned, lower order revisions, high order revisions are things that I went for in this and I basically summarized what um, they were asking for. The reason why I do low order and high order is it just helps me separate all of the uh, concerns that are, that are present. So with low order, things like uh, adding citations or doing some kind of line editing, you know, if someone's like, you got a couple of errors in there, fix them. You know, I can push those off till later. But the high order one's about something like offering another definition or revising like the opening passage and scene, which they thought kind of went a little too quickly. You know, that's what I would call, however, that's going to take some really significant thinking and time for me to craft a better article. Um, and so what I was tasked with doing in this is per the journal's request, you want to address point by point what you decided to do and what you decided not to do. And so I think I get into this in the, the video as well, but um, you know, I, I kind of summarized just, just basically what they said. So you can see, for example, like also suggested they justify my discussion of two significant findings, you know, um, and it was about reception and collaboration in this case, you know, and as I sort of had to say here, it was a bit interesting. While I do have plenty of commentary on more technical and distribution practices, I feel those discussions can wait for another article for my future book that dwells deeply in each area of practice. So that's kind of saying, thank you for the suggestion. I'm going to have to keep it small and, and go deep rather than having, um, you know, a full discussion of every single practice that I found in this article. And so, yeah, that was, you know, that's, that's a careful maneuvering, right? You, you can say I disagree or I just don't have time. Space prevents me from doing it, et cetera, et cetera, I think. Um, and so, you know, it's about two pages where I'm just working through what I decided to change. Again, this just helps me compartmentalize what I might be working on or need to work on significantly for like a week or two weeks or even a month, depending on how substantial the revisions are and what I can say for the end. Um, so I might even flip them in the future and say high order first, low order later. Um, and again, it just helps me organize it thematically. Okay, so uh, with that said, I will turn now to the stream sort of stuff I was working on. Uh, behind the scenes so that you can still see what this is all about. Um, and yeah, thank you.
Hey everybody, so today's the day. It is April 21st and I am getting ready to submit the final draft, or revised draft I should say, for a College English article. Now I've been keeping a time-lapsed video of all of my revisions since I received those back along with reviewer comments and just want to talk through a little bit about what went into it. Um, so on the left hand side of my screen you'll see that I made a plan. I knew that it was a revise and resubmit. Um, I came up with some loose deadlines, tried to stick to them for the most part. I think I pretty much accomplished them. Um, maybe not so much on low order and high order. Uh, I actually started with high order first and then reversed them later on. And then I've been doing some proofreading um, this past week and even this morning at about seven in the morning just because I couldn't sleep. And I don't know if it was because of that, but uh, it might have been because my son woke me up at 6 a.m. Um, I also included the instructions from the editor, and that kind of helped me just remind myself that, you know, perhaps they were interested and to, to know what the instructions were. Um, particularly here where it talks about the revise and resubmit, it's, you know, a common affirmative suggestion. So, you know, I've been reading a lot of... Um, guides and so forth on manuscript submissions and so forth and it struck me that you know a rise and resubmit isn't bad at all it's actually a pretty good thing it means that they see promise in the article they just want you to perhaps make some pretty substantial changes um so it's not a rejection and that's good as long as you're still on the table you've got a, good, a shot um and what i did after that after i got the reviewer comments is i ordered them under low order and high order and that just kind of helped me make a checklist and to synthesize what reviewer one and reviewer two had said um, so along the way i just kind of scratched through each one of them and did the same thing for the high order as well so there were some kind of conceptual and definitional and definitional uh, issues that they had brought forth um, that they wanted to see in the next pass and the problem that i found kind of and i always find when i'm working on essays is whether it's you know for a magazine or for a journal article um, you kind of have to do more with less sometimes you need to expand on concepts but you need to be mindful of the word count now this article is clocking in at roughly 10,000 words it's longer than a lot of things I've worked on in, in recent, the past two years, uh, post dissertation and near the end of it. So I felt like I had some wiggle room because College English's guidelines are a little longer. They permit that length, but we'll see once I submit it what they have to say. So on the right hand side, I have the revisions that I've conducted here, and I'm working on a few more this morning before I send it off to um, Submission Manager for College English. And yeah, the whole time I kept track changes on, I've turned them off for the most part at this point. I sent it to a few different friends, so a little shout out to my friends John and Colin for looking it over, as well as my writing group with Brandy and Stephanie. Um, really just kind of helped me understand what these reviews were about and how I might tackle them. So they gave me a number of suggestions in that regard. I've also been doing it with pen and paper. So sometimes just printing it off and Taking a couple minutes to scratch through it on a pen and paper can be pretty useful because you're not um, as tended to start line editing right on the fly as you're reading it. You can do it by hand, but there's still that delay. The words are still there. You can work with them um, along the way. So I've considered a few different citations to kind of swap out that are more relevant or more timely. And I'll be working on that this morning as well. So the next thing that I was working on and um, you know I found this to be pretty useful as well is the revision note now most journals I've worked with you know I'm not saying I've worked with a lot but uh, that I've had the experience with in the past two years or so have requested some kind of um, revision letter in which you address what the reviewers or the editors were suggesting and so I'm attaching this reviewers note with my revisions and uh, again, I did the same thing. I ordered it by low order and higher order revisions. And was wanted to be careful to say that I wasn't saying that low order was not useful or not important. Um, just that one was kind of more about local and one was more about global. 
And what I'm hoping this will do is guide the intention of the reviewers in some way so they know that I've paid attention to line entity changes like pseudonyms, um, name spellings, and so forth, and then citations. And then the more conceptual, theoretical, definitional kind of issues come up under high order revisions. And I wrote some substantial um, paragraphs in that regard. So there were some suggestions about um, the opening two pages, for instance, needing to better define what web text and digital scholarship is, discussions on theories of affect later on, and then some, some justifications for the significance of findings. Now, there was an example here of maybe saying more um, about the findings, but I had to push back slightly um, just to say that I think that it would result in more breadth than depth and that perhaps I could take up those practices in a later article. And I, you know, I kind of admit that's a little risky uh, doing that because, you know, I, the one thing I always worry about when I'm working on these revision letters and reviews is that I don't, um, you know, accord with everything the reviewers are saying. But when I recently edited a special issue, I saw that review, um, authors were doing the same thing. They would take the suggestions and respond to them and then justify why one or another um, may not be useful for their argument. And I think that's okay, right? As long as you can kind of defend it and uh, not simply ignore it and move on, I think you're in better shape. And I think that's what I noticed that editors tend to say is if you don't address the changes, and if you don't even address why you didn't address the changes, then um, you know, you're less likely to be successful. So I'm just polishing this and I'll do that once I've worked on uh, the manuscript a little further. But yeah, I'm excited to submit it and hopefully I can post an update to see how it goes. You know, if I get an accept, that's great. If I get accept revisions, it's, that's great as well. But we'll see. I'm, I'm pretty excited about working on this and, you know, I wanted to do this time lapse video plus this little diary um, to accord with the claims I'm making in this article that we should make our processes a little more transparent. I should also say that I worked on this article with Microsoft Word as well as Scrivener to organize my notes and so forth because I had a lot that I was working from as I was moving from my dissertation to one of my first articles that would come um, directly from it. So that was helpful as well in organizing Google Docs, email, what have you. All this stuff I'm recording for you has been done over the OBS um, Open Broadcasting Studio. I've got a couple mics and cameras as well, so I'm fortunate to have those tools in order to make more transparent uh, my processes so that it's hopefully useful for other folks who are um, you know, interested in, in publishing and working through the uh, challenges and struggles that you know um, come with this kind of work. So thanks again and hope to talk to you soon. In this screen recording, I'm just sharing that my article has been conditionally accepted very, very excited about that. So big thanks to Melissa, Ianetta, and the reviewers for accepting it in some way. So um, basically, I have to go through some minor revisions and submit it by the end of this month. So rest of this video will basically be a time-lapsed version of me working through some of these revisions and getting it ready for um, submission before it goes through some copy editing and such so really excited about these um reviewers just recommending some micro comments in the introduction and things of that sort and uh was pleased with the latter parts of it so again like really cool to see that they um approved of it and you know i i'll have to admit it was pretty unnerving just working through those revisions because i know when you get a rise and resubmit um you don't know what the outcome is going to be after that but in this case, uh, they chose to conditionally accept it. Um, so I basically have to attend to that. I'll submit it, and then the editor will make a decision from that point. So I'm hoping that this will run in September. Um, but again, for now, I'm just going to work through it, do my best. I've got about two weeks at this point to do it. I think it's doable. I'm going to do it slowly just because I don't want to mess up, and I want to uh, greater um, raise my chances, really, of getting published. So very excited again. All right. That's all I have. Bye. All right, everyone. That's all I have for this week about revising and writing, especially this article, Theorizing Rhetorical Effective Workflows. 
I hope it was really useful to see in time-lapse ways how in a one session or two sessions, doing a lot of work, scratching out, commenting on the sides, addressing the revision, writing the letter as I look at the document, having a split screen, so to say, and then reflecting on what I did, what I was excited about. So it ended up getting acceptance eventually, super jazzed about that, and then it was published a number of months later. And it was one of my first actually at York, so I was really thrilled to see that come together. I uh, just want to close with a couple of reminders for us. Um, you know, in the next few weeks, we've got some really great things lined up. We have virtual reality, uh, composing and or writing and intervening in a conversation on lit review, presenting and composing yourself. So we only have four remaining after today's video. And uh, again, you know, it really goes fast. And unlike last year, we had a number of conversations with special guests, but that has been a focal point of my work this term as uh, as the broadcaster and as the streamer. I get so much energy out of conversations. So if you know anyone else who might want to participate in our streams or have any ideas, feel free to write us uh, in the comments below. And I'll also link to the article that I discussed today so you can read the final version if you're interested. But that's all I have for this week. We will be back next week for writing as in virtual reality. Until then, take care.